together to do some drawing. It is the Draw Along Show with me, Kyle Webster. I'm glad you're here joining me. Nothing going on right now in the world, right? So we could all just do some drawing together since things are so boring. Anyway, hope you're all doing well. I had a nice little break away from uh, work and it was nice to be with the family and all that. I hope you all had some time away for the holidays as well to just relax and uh, to take care of yourselves a little bit. Now it's back to school, as you all know. See history. Say, gang, I had a question. All right, time for us to do some drawing. Some kind of a really beautiful piece of china that your parents love that you can decorate with a Sharpie so that it's permanent. All right, let's see who we have here today. Uh, my chat is frozen here. I'm just going to refresh it. Oh my gosh, there's everybody. Hey, Stephen and RB, nice to see you. Mercurial, hello, hello. And I see Clever is here. Hi there, how are you all? Thank you for joining me today for some drawing and uh, taking yourselves away from the crazy news cycle, right? All righty. Now, to do these drawings, you have to be able to do three simple things. And if you've been with me before, you know that those are a straight line, okay, a zigzag, and a curvilinear line. It could be an S curve, a C curve, this way, that way. You get the idea, right? So today we're going to draw something, and it is a creature, and it's going to be really fun and really simple. This is one of my favorites because it's kind of geometric, and you know I like those kinds of drawings, right? We're going to start with a straight line that goes across like that, okay? And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, like I always say, straight-ish, all righty? Then we're going to draw a line coming down from this corner, okay? And it's going to be a little longer than that line. Check it out. Here we go. Just about like that. See, it's a little longer. Same on this side for some symmetry. That's the beginning of our drawing, all right? It's like uh, three-fourths of a box, right? Now, I want you to imagine where the center of this box shape is, and imagine coming down a little further here. We're going to make a V down here at the bottom. It's going to go down and up, okay, a zigzag. And I want you to think, okay, where's the center? Because that's where you really want to make that turn from one angle to another. And what I like to do is give myself a little dot, right? I can do a little dot like that. Zoom in so you can see that dot. See that tiny little dot? I can see it. If you can't see it, that's okay. But make something that you can see on your page. And then what I can do is I can just aim for those that spot right there, and that gives me a nice V in the center. And that's the beginning of our drawing. It's kind of like a little shield. How about that? Now, I want you to take this top line that we first drew and just carry it out a little bit further, like so. Do the same on this side, a little further, like so. More symmetry, gang. Okay, and then from here, right, where we just extended that line, we're going to draw at an angle, all right, about, I would say, a little greater than 45 degrees, maybe about a 50 degree angle, out about like that. Do the same on that side, okay? And what you're gonna do now is you're going to draw a curvilinear line, this is a C curve, to connect these two, so, one and two. Look at that. Interesting, interesting. All right. Now maybe you're catching on and realizing what it is that we're drawing here, and that's okay. It's fun to figure it out. Now down here, another little C curve. Watch this, just a little one like that. And I'm gonna do two vertical lines, one here and one here. Check it out. One, two. Just like that. Oh, look at that. I think we know what's going on here, don't we, gang? Yes, we do. Alrighty, now, we are gonna draw a very interesting kind of an S curve. All right, now this S is gonna come straight down off the side of the face here, straight down. It's gonna curve out a little bit, and it's gonna have a nice big curve at the bottom and stop right about there. So it's gonna come down, to about there. Now watch me do it. Here we go. Down we go, curve out, stop about there. All right? So we came down, curved out, and we stop right about there. Now the key is for it to come out a little ways so it doesn't wind up coming down this way. All right, so it's coming outwards and then stopping. And here from this point, okay, I'm going to do another straight line heading out in this direction. And I'm going to make sure that it goes past this left side of the face here. Okay, so I know I want to, I want to make sure I cross that path. And if I want to, I can put a little dot there to tell myself, hey, make sure you go past that line. 
Now watch how I do this. Come across all the way to about there. Now don't worry, you can always make the line longer later, okay? So that's no big deal. But that's what we want to do first. Now, I want you to look at the distance about halfway down this S-curve, okay? Come a little lower than that, so think about maybe two-thirds of the way down, and come into the body this way, and just do a nice C-curve like that. And that's that bottom part of the leg there, it's bending, right? And then we're gonna come inside of this diagonal line we made here, about halfway, and we're gonna drop, drop straight down to about there. Okay, see that? Down to about there. In fact, that line, if you ask me, is about the same length as that line, okay? Alrighty. YouTube keeps telling me I have a poor connection. I hope that's not true. I hope that you all are seeing me clearly and everything's working out for you without too much buffering. Um, but you know, down here in North Kakalaki, even though I'm paying for some pretty good internet service, I tell you, it just doesn't always work out. All right, we are gonna do a nice little C-curve this way. Check this out, C-curve out to about there. All right, and these are what I call shallow C-curves, right? They're not a big curve, not a deep curve. And then I'm gonna come back from here and into there like that. Give me a little space there, do you see that? Okay, now what we've done is we've given ourselves the first of, of, of one of our fingers here. You can make that a little longer if you want. And we're just gonna add one there and add one there and then add one at the bottom like that. And that's our little mouse hand, okay? Or this could be a rat, rat, mouse, whichever you prefer, does not matter. Now that I've done this, I know that I can carry this line here down all the way to meet that bottom line. And then here's where I can do another C curve like that. Okay, that kind of mirrors or echoes that C curve. And there's the bottom of the rat's uh, feet there and the legs. Now again, like I said, you can always make this line a little longer if you need to. I got lucky and I got it the right length to begin with, but if you need to stretch that out a little bit, no worries, okay? Now check this out. Here, I'm gonna come right inside these fingers and draw a line out this way. Then I'm gonna draw a line across, ready? But I'm gonna stop for a moment and interrupt it with a little U shape. And then keep on going. See that? Now I'm gonna come down this way, like I'm making a triangle, okay? I'm gonna be doing a triangle, but again, I'm gonna come down and interrupt it with another C curve. And then keep on curves in there, a couple little dots if you want. And now you have a little piece of cheese. And then here on the other side, right? Gotta draw that other arm. I'm just gonna do a little line like that. And just from where we see this intersection of this straight line here, I'm gonna come up like that. We know that hand is going behind, okay? And holding the cheese from the other side. And down here at the bottom, I'm gonna take this straight line and I'm gonna pull it up and do a letter S. Watch this, we go out and S. And there's our nice tail. And look at that, look at that. There is our lovely little mouse that we've drawn. You may be wondering where are the whiskers? Hey, don't worry about that. Easy to add whiskers, just go one and two, one and two. Right, you wanna make three, make three. You wanna make four, make four. Here's another thing you can do. If you like this ge geometric approach, take that same angle that you've got going there. Bring those up and then just bring those out like that. I like that approach too. You can do a little line in the ear, just like that, right? You do another fancy thing. Look at this, you can do a C curve that way and a C curve that way for more detail in the ear. But make this mouse your own or this rat, whichever you choose. Uh, give it a little home to live in. Give it a nice little setting of some kind. Maybe draw some little rat buddies. Maybe he's by a garbage can somewhere. Maybe he's outside of a fancy French restaurant, found that cheese. Who knows, who knows? Um, all right, but that is our draw along portion of the show. Thank you for joining me for that. Hope your drawings turned out very well. And we're gonna move on now to our art vocab. And today the art vocab word is hatching. And some of you may have heard of cross hatching before, but cross hatching is a kind of Hatching, and as you can see here, hatching is an artistic technique used to create tonal 
or shading effects by drawing closely spaced parallel lines. When lines are placed at an angle to one another, it is called cross hatching. And here is a great example of some hatching and some cross hatching going on in a drawing by Mr. Albrecht Durer. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can really get a good look at that hatching. And what this does is it allows you to describe form, okay, through the use of line, okay, but it also allows you to build up value, as was stated in the definition. And when I say value, I mean darks and lights. You can make an area darker by having lines placed closely to one another or overlapping one another. And the more densely you overlap them or the closer together you put them, to one another, the more you build up an area that appears to be darker than the white of the page, right? And this is a pretty fantastic technique for those of you who like to work with line art and are not using any other way to create tones such as with paint or anything else. Um, instead, you're just working with lines that are 100% opaque and every stroke is the same as the last in terms of its opacity. And so here's a technique you can use to make sure that you can build up some tone. And one of the things that's nice about using hatching is that you can move around the form, across the form, rather than um, moving in the direction of, uh, of the, the, the form itself, which it appears to be moving. What I mean by that, for example, is this. I'll give you a nice demonstration of this. I think this will help. I'll hide this for just a moment. Bring back our little mouse here. So what I mean to say is, if I have a shape like so, okay, I can make it appear as if this shape has dimension by drawing these lines that appear to be moving up and over across the shape here, and then I can make them a little shorter. And no longer do we see something that appears to be two-dimensional, but rather three-dimensional. So this is a pretty nifty thing. Right? All that with just line, isn't that crazy? And if I were to make the lines denser here towards this left side, Okay, we start to get the impression that things are darker here. We're coming around the form, moving towards this area here, which is like the area that's lit. Okay, so we have a shadow shape here. And then you can get into things like cross hatching to make it even darker on that side. Okay, so hopefully you can see what we're doing here. And this makes sense, right? Look at that. So now we're adding dimension there. Pretty nifty trick. All these lines are the same opacity, right? But we are now making it appear as if it's a three-dimensional object. So hatching, cool technique, good vocab word. And uh, we are going to now move on, of course, to our animal and activity game. And, uh, oh, sorry, I hear a nice little alarm. And that alarm means that it is time for us to do The Appreciation Station. Now, for today, we are appreciating our good friend, Amanda. Amanda, are you out there? Can you see us, Amanda? Amanda, thank goodness for you. I want to tell a quick story about Amanda, everybody. This one time when we were um, hiking through Bulgaria, there was this wizard that had a toothache and Amanda, because she had trained as an amateur dentist, was able to help him out and relieve him of his pain. That poor wizard was in terrible pain. And thanks to Amanda, what he did was he gave each of us a magic turnip to bring home with us. Now I've got mine uh, tucked away very safely for a rainy day. And Amanda, I hope you still got yours. I don't know, let me know in the chat if you still hold on to that turnip. But thank you for that cool experience and it was a good time hiking with you way out there in those mountains. Anyway, let's get back to drawing. Okay, so we are moving on to the animal and activity. Now this is when you will suggest for me an animal doing something strange, funny, bizarre, weird, unexpected. And I will attempt in the time that we have remaining to draw that animal for you, my friends in the audience and in the chat. Okay, so let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, <laughs> hmm. 
So in the chat, give me a suggestion of an animal doing something strange, something weird, something funny, and I will draw that for you. Now we've done silly things in the past. We've had animals playing certain kinds of games or playing certain kinds of sports, or just engaged in all kinds of silliness. And this is usually one of my favorite parts of the show because it's a challenge for me in such a short amount of time to do an interesting drawing. So we have an archer cat, a cat as an archer. That's a cool one, Stephen. I like that, I like that. Amanda, do you, oh, you didn't answer me. Do you have that turnip? I so, hope you didn't uh, lose it. Uh, yeah, that dentist training did come in handy. Very nice. A sad cat. We need more than that. We need a cat doing something. Like Stephen has said, a cat doing archery, something like that. Okay, we need some kind of activity, some kind of thing that this person is doing. Or animal, excuse me. A scorpion on a highway, juggling. Can I even draw a scorpion? I mean, I can sort of picture in my head the tail. Can't really picture the face of a scorpion. Don't like the looks of them. A dog playing poker, says Gabrielle. That's fun too. A beagle smoking a pipe. Hello, Joel. Hello, Joel. Um, a beagle smoking a pipe. That's pretty interesting. Um, roller skating. Who's roller skating, Amanda? A bat getting a vaccine. Ha! <laughs> Good one, boy. I tell you. Yeah. If you ever wondered uh, whether or not one person can make a difference in the world, just try eating a bat. A rabbit jumping over a rope. I like that too. Well, I have a few minutes left, so let me look through these quickly and see what it is I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. Da, 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 da. Um, I think I'm going to do Stephen's suggestion of a cat doing archery. I like that. Um, by the way, folks, in the audience here in the chat, you might not know this, but you there. There's a celebrity illustrator hanging out here. Very modest fellow, but I want to call him out. Joel Kimmel is here, and look up his work. Joel Kimmel, incredible artist, good friend. One of my favorite guys. All right, now, here we go. A cat doing archery. So let's get my light color, which is gonna be a light blue. Make a new layer here. And let's draw this cat. So this cat means business, okay? He is doing some archery. All righty. Uh, I've, I'm trying to think like, what does it look like when you're doing archery? You have your got one arm straight out, holding that bow, right? Oh, more sort of like that shape. Isn't that there who does archery can, can help me out? Let's get that hand a little higher and let's center that. Let's get it more like that. There we go. Or so is the hand above the book? I think the hand is below, right? So the hand comes down here, bum, 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 like that, and the arrow goes up there. So let's get that hand up higher. This is why we sketch, gang. This is why we sketch. And see, I can just erase all that garbage. Get that out of the way, pull that up there. <laughs> and if I want to, I can take that head. We're in Photoshop here, so I can just move stuff if I want. I can pop it back there like that. Oh, Photoshop, I love you. You make things so easy. Oh, so there's that arm coming out that way. Arrow is there. Erase that hand because we don't need it. And give him like a sort of a heroic wide stance. And there's that tail. Okay. One ear, two ears. And I like this idea of him like wearing a collared shirt and pants for some reason. I, I don't know why I like that so much, but that's what I'm gonna do, gang. Hey, it's my drawing, you can't stop me. You can suggest what I draw, but I'm still gonna do what I want with the, the details, right? Alrighty, there we go. 
So that feels pretty good. Why don't we make this come to life? We are gonna knock back the opacity. Come on the top of this here with another new layer. We're just going to grab our darker color and it is time to bring this to life with our much more confident line work here, which is made possible by, of course, the sketch, right? Like I'm always saying, boy, if it weren't for the sketching that we do to set these drawings up, well, this next step in the process would be mm, almost impossible. At least for somebody like myself. Now, I know there are folks out there who can just wing it, okay? And hey, more power to you, good for you. But that's not me. I love the safety and security of a good sketch. All right, now that arrow is coming straight over here. Zang! There it goes. We got our nice delicate line here. And delicate line there. Um, and we got the other hand holding the bow there, just underneath. I know there's some kind of like thing that you set the arrow in between. I don't know what that's called. Somebody out there can help me out. I don't know what it's called. I know the word knock is involved somewhere, right? Anybody out there do archery? It's not the kind of thing a lot of people really do, is it? Whoops, let's get that down there, cha-cha-cha. Alrighty. And pant leg number one, pant leg number two, Woo! And we have one foot there, and one there, and there's our cattail. Whoops, get that little shadow there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wonder what he's aiming at, this cat. What? We don't know, do we? There. Now, I didn't really give him a thumb, so let's do that. And uh, since we have time, let's add just a little bit of detail to that bow. And I think we are good to go, gang. What do you think? Tell me what you think. How'd that go? We all right here? Are we okay? Are we doing all right with that drawing? Well, thank you for joining me. It was a pleasure hanging out with you again. Um, I see some nice comments from everybody. Robin Hood Kitty, I like that. Amanda, thanks everybody for hanging with me. Thank you, Mr. Joel Kimmel, for hanging out with us. Um, what an honor. And everybody, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remember, please, of course, it's 2021, but just as with last year or any year, to be kind. And uh, that's the most important thing. So I will see you tomorrow, same time, for more drawing. Ciao for now.